Let's stir up some more emotions and clean cook a soft shell turtle. <laughs> and just like last time, this is a educational video and I hope you learned something. Just take a look at it first. Look at it. Look at how big it is. I'm gonna be answering two of the most common questions. Is this legal and are they endangered? As far as legalities go, please follow your local laws and regulations. I've said this in my previous video. For Minnesota, you can keep soft shell turtles that are 12 inches and larger. Their carapace has to be 12 inches or larger. The shell on this one here is 15 and a half inches from up here to down here. And this specific soft shell turtle is a spiny soft shell turtle as identified by those spines that you see at the top of the carapace. After catching it, I have to call the DNR officer and let them know that I'm taking a turtle. And my DNR officer knows about this and has approved of it already. You also have to have a turtle license. It's a recreational turtle license to be exact in order to take turtles. So on top of having a fishing license, you have to have a turtle license as well to take turtles. Adult sized turtles like this don't really have natural predators. When they're smaller, like baby size like foxes raccoons a few birds of prey and stuff might eat those smaller turtles but these larger turtles are usually only hunted by humans and these are definitely not endangered at all they're not close to being endangered because these are actually almost overpopulated because there's not a lot of people that hunt these mainly because people just don't know about it because they're just ignorant and i'm here to kind of share that you can take turtles in minnesota and the thing is is the laws are really confusing because on the DNR website for Minnesota, it doesn't state that you can take these. It only says red ear slider and snapping turtles. But when you go to a certain page, to the actual like laws and statutes, uh, it actually says that you can take soft shell turtles. And my DNR officer knows that I'm taking it and says that it's okay. And so enough talking, we're gonna get right into it. I'll be using my Leatherman Surge to pull his head out and then I'm gonna chop it off. So here is the turtle. It's headless, but it's still moving around. I've actually let it bleed out for about eight minutes now and I think it's all out. It has taken a while because this is a larger turtle than the one last time. So the way that I'm going to be cleaning and preparing this turtle this time is gonna be different from my previous video. Today, what I wanna do is I wanna pour boiling water on it and peel off the very thin layer that this turtle has on its belly and on its shell. And once I've peeled everything off, it's pretty much clean and then I'll be able to use everything and cook it and uh, eat it however I'd like. And the way I'm going to prepare this this time is I'm going to braise it in Coco Rico and a few other items and stuff. So this is going to be interesting. And so I've never cleaned a turtle with boiling water before, but I assume it's very similar to how I clean catfish with boiling water. So let's give this a try and see how this turns out. So here it is. I got some boiling water. Let's pour on a shell like this. And, oh yeah, see, look at that. This is what we want to happen. I want to be able to peel stuff like this off. See, just like that. Oh, that's awesome. See, this is perfect. So this is exactly what I'm looking for. I need to clean the turtle like this. Last time I didn't do this, so it was really challenging to eat the shell last time. Oh, this is so cool, look at that. And so this stuff isn't really edible, but this soft stuff is edible, but you just need to clean off this thin layer. So let's throw some more on, on the edges here. There you go. And last time I encountered a parasite issue also. Parasites were living in the skin 
on the legs and stuff and you were able to see them squirm around and stuff and uh, that was a problem for me and so I had to skin it carefully. If I put boiling water on it I think that would actually prevent the parasites from from being an issue. Let's uh, pour some boiling water on its legs now and its belly. There you go. Yeah there's a thin layer yes see Oh, this is amazing. Yeah, this, this is really cool. So I'm peeling this and yeah, on its legs too, see? I'm peeling the skin off of its legs and its tail here, see? Everything is getting peeled. There's this layer on his feet here. It's all coming off. Ah, the nails are coming off too. I'm not sure if you're able to see this, but watch. Yeah, that's the nail. That's the toenail, just like chicken. So basically like the chicken toenails, the chicken feet into hot water, scalding water, and this exact same thing happens. This is very interesting. I'm just going to twist, see, oh, there you go. And then I pop off a toenail, just like that. Pop off another toenail, there you go. And here's the last toenail. I've been able to peel off all of that skin on the outside of a turtle. And you can see the color of the shell is slightly lighter too. It's almost like a lime green now. So everything is clean. Let's butcher it now and cut it. So last time I used this fillet knife. That's what I'm gonna be using again today. So pretty much you can see the carapace right here like that. So you wanna cut in the soft bits right here. So I usually just make an incision right here in the corner. Just go like that and then start cutting away like this below this section here, just like that. And then basically you go around and then under the leg here like this. There you go, open this up like this and then just make some slices, cuts down. So I'm gonna make a cut in here, then go around. So once I have that all separated like this, I usually like to go up front and do the same thing. If the legs allow me to, because it keeps pulling in. <laughs> and then pretty much just separate the meat from the carapace. So from here, I like to grab some shears and cut the shell right about here or so to kind of open it up. So cut here. There you go. Here, you just cut away all the meat from the carapace, you know, open it up. <laughs> wow. I can't believe this was another female. Look at this. Look at all the dragon balls. <laughs> all right, we're going to prepare these eggs right away. All right, I have all the meat here. <laughs> I have the front and hind legs here. This time, I actually kept the skin on because I've already peeled that thin layer on the outside already. And so I'm going to see if this is edible. Like, I want to know if I can cook this and if it's like tasty or not. If it's like gelatinous or if it's like chewy or if it's not chewy at all. Like, I don't know. And so I'm gonna keep this, I'm gonna cook it like this and hopefully it turns out good because I already know like the meat, the meat is phenomenal. Like it is like tender and it doesn't have a gamey taste at all. It tastes like mixed between like pork and chicken tenderloin. It's very, very tender and soft and it doesn't have much like, like flavor really. It's like, it's a sweet sort of meat and it's really tasty. And so I'm gonna be braising this today. And so I'm gonna quarter it up a little bit more, I think, and I'm going to slow cook it. Yeah, so that's what we're gonna be doing. So I'm gonna keep everything intact like that maybe cut it up a little bit more. This right here 
is the neck. And this is sort of like its pelvis, I think, like in the back bone. And then this is the tail. And uh, I'm keeping the tail skin also a little bit. We've got the, the dragon eggs and the carapace. So this is going to be turned into a soup. I'm going to take like the soft bits like this right here. I'm gonna cut it off and make a soup out of it. And this stuff turns out to be really, really gelatinous and it's incredibly good. It tastes almost like catfish skin. That's what it kind of tastes like. And to me, it's really good. It's very reminiscent of like beef tendons or anything that has collagen in it. It's really good. So yeah, I'm gonna get everything prepared and get cooking. And I forgot about the head. I still have this too. I'm going to just throw this in a bag and put it in the freezer and then eventually figure out what I'm gonna do with it. I have three of these heads now. And so yeah, it's gonna be interesting. <laughs> and I'm going to cook these eggs right away because these go bad very, very quickly once you've processed it. And so I'm going to take these and I'm going to boil them up and cook them right away. So I took a quick break to cook some of the eggs here. And uh, I'm gonna be honest, the last time that you saw me eat eggs from like the turtle last year, I made a TikTok video of me just boiling and cooking and eating it. That time that I did it, it wasn't as fresh as can be. It was left in the fridge raw for about two, three days. And then I noticed that there was a color change in the eggs. And so then I started deciding to like eat it and everything and cook and eat it and it didn't taste that great. It tasted fishy and it was rubbery and it wasn't good. So these eggs like literally were just pulled out and uh, I just boiled them and the color looks a lot different than last time. So yeah, they, uh, some of them kind of blew up <laughs> because of the heat. Uh, but yeah, let's uh, give this a try and uh, see what they taste like very very fresh there's squirrels in my shed right now i can hear them wow this is getting worse and worse every single day this bucket right here is is a bucket of rice they're biting through the cap, look at this, there's a hole right here. They're biting through it and they're eating it. These squirrels and mice, oh man, I cannot wait to like begin to like clean up my shed here. Like this is big motivation to get my shed cleaned up. This is alcohol just to clean up my fingers. So yeah, here are the eggs. Look at it, nice. Mm. Oh, that's not bad. It's really powdery though. It tastes like overcooked eggs. And it's very, very powdery. There is like a very, very, very subtle sort of fishiness, but you can barely even notice it. And I think the only reason I notice it is because I've been like handling like the turtle. But yeah, I don't really smell it in the bowl. So it must be my fingers. I think it is. Mm, this is not bad at all. I boiled it in some salted water. And so there's a hint of saltiness. Mm -hmm. Just like powdered eggs <laughs> or something, you know, like overcooked powdered like egg yolk. It was not as dry as, as eggs, like chicken eggs. This is good, I like it. <clears throat> all right, so this is sort of like an intermission. And uh, I'm just gonna take a quick break before I continue and, and cook uh, <laughs> this, this turtle. I gotta show you what it is first. This, this is a Budweiser Chilada. Clamato and picante, it's uh, spicy. I had this before and it's not bad. It's actually pretty decent. I was supposed to shake it up. That's why it looks like this. It's not really supposed to look like that. It's supposed to look a lot more red, I think. We'll see. Ooh, 
It's still really good though. It tastes tomatoey and salty. Ah, there you go. See how darker it looks now? <laughs> That's what it's supposed to look like. <laughs> Perfect. Perfect break. <laughs> Butchering an animal like this takes a lot of mental energy. Like in hindsight, I've noticed that too with my chickens. Even though like I was butchering a lot of chickens, I was still sort of like always mentally preparing myself to butcher the chicken that specific day. I have to get so many things prepared. I have to have my knife, my bowl to collect the blood. Gotta get the tripod and cameras set up. Gotta get water boiled up so that I can dip the chicken in the water so I can pluck it. And there are so many small details that I have to kind of worry about when like butchering a chicken. The same goes for this turtle. Like I have to have my water running so I can clean off the blood or I have to have my bag ready so I can throw stuff away. There's a lot of tiny things that you have to prepare for. Um, same thing with like, and even boiling the water and stuff, you know? And then that's just the butchering part. Then you have to go into the whole cooking part of it. Um, and so, yeah, there's just so much work involved when you have to like clean, cook, and eat an animal. <laughs> oh man, that was so satisfying. So, so far, if you've enjoyed the video so far, please smash that like button and consider subscribing, hitting that bell and hitting all notifications so you don't miss any of my videos. Let's get right into the next part of the video where I cook the turtle. <laughs> All right, so I have the turtle meat here. I'm only going to cook the front leg and hind leg. All the other pieces of meat, I'm gonna save for other dishes. So I'm gonna heat up some water, get it boiling, and then I'm going to blanch the meat in the boiling water for a little bit, take it out, rinse it, and then I'll take the meat and I'll start braising it. All right, so I'm gonna wait for this to boil. All right, it's boiling, see? <laughs> All right, so we're just gonna blanch the meat. So here it is, here's the leg, put it in. Here's the other one. All I need to do is just kind of swirl it around just so it kind of cooks a little bit and stiffens up. Ah, there you go. Ah, and then there's some skin. There's some layer of skin on the turtle still. Yeah, so I'm gonna be removing more of this and cleaning off all that gunk on the skin. The skin is really tough. I hope this is going to work. It feels very rubbery. It might be difficult to eat. We'll see. So what I'm gonna do now is I'm going to bring this inside. I'm gonna dump out all the water. I'm just gonna rinse the whole thing clean and I'm gonna take it back out and then that's when we'll start uh, braising it. So I'm back. I cleaned up the skin a little bit more and I chopped it up a bit too. And what I've discovered was the skin feels like that sort of rubberiness, just like how uh, pork feet would be like. So if you've ever eaten pork feet and like boiled it real quick and it's really tough and hard, that's exactly what the texture is like. Same with this piece right here. See, it's sort of like pork hock. The skin is super thick and it's tough. And so I know, I swear that when I cook this for a very long time and braise it for a long time, this is going to become gelatinous and it's going to taste amazing. Let's hope this is successful. <laughs> so I normally use fresh garlic, but I only have like minced garlic that's pre-made already. So I'm just gonna toss some in like this. I'm gonna be using Coco Rico two cans of it. There you go. Red Boat fish sauce. And this is MSG. And then I have two Thai chili peppers. These are going to be added at the end. So I will just cut them up into small rings and then just toss them in. And this is basically it. These are all the ingredients, this is all you need. So I'm gonna turn up the heat, I'm gonna let this boil, and then I'm gonna turn down the heat and let this simmer for a long time. 
until like the meat and the skin is tender. Like the, the meat will probably already be tender because that's just how turtle meat is, but the skin is what I need to get tender. Oh, uh, this is going to take a little bit of time because I feel like it's gonna be just like how pork skin is like when you braise uh, pork. I'll let this sit like that, pop this on, and I'll be back. All right, so I've been cooking this for about three hours. So what I did was I brought it up to a boil and let it cook down. I let it cook down to about half an inch or so, and then I would pour like a cup or two cups of water into it and just rinse and repeat. And I just kept doing that until the skin on the turtle is gelatinous. So if you take a look at this, yeah, like it's soft and it looks like pork feet. This thing is so crazy and it smells amazing. I've been simmering it for a long time now and so everything is good to eat at this point. What I want to do is I want to caramelize the liquid and so I'm just going to continue cooking it down until it caramelizes. There you go, I'm gonna turn up the heat and keep the lid off. This entire time I've been cooking with the lid on. So now we're taking it off and uh, just letting it cook. This is also the best time to add your chilies. Cut little bits of it like this. It's a little too sweet, so I'm gonna add a little bit more fish sauce. At this stage of the cooking process, it's up to you to kind of decide how you want it. Like if you want it saltier or if you want it sweeter, you will adjust accordingly. So yeah, right now, all I'm doing is I'm just, I'm just boiling off the liquid so that it caramelizes. All right. Once it starts looking like this and once it's like cooked down enough, I want to leave a little bit of liquid left so I can eat it with rice. So turn off the heat. And this is perfect. I'm gonna pour this out now. And sprinkle on some greens, just to make it look pretty. <laughs> there you go. All right, so I have a bowl of rice, and here is the soft shell turtle. <laughs> this is so crazy cool. Like, look at that. So I'm gonna put in the rice and start eating. So here is the paw. I'm gonna take the caramelized liquid there and drench the rice with it, just like that. All right, look at the turtle paw. <laughs> That's so crazy. So it has become gelatinous and uh, I'm gonna give it a try. I'm a little creeped out, but I mean, it looks good. And it smells good. Oh, wow. Holy crap, that is absolutely amazing. It's just really weird that I'm eating this, but it's no different from eating like a pork like foot or something. The meat is really dark on the leg. And after cooking it about four hours, the meat is still like really firm. It doesn't feel like I've cooked it for that long. Like it still has texture and body to it. And it doesn't just break and melt in your mouth like I would think it would. But the skin, look how bouncy it is. Mm-hmm. It reminds me of cooked pork skin. Mmm. Oh, it's so good. Not sure if you remember, but it had a bunch of like toenails that I pulled off and then it still had those nails there. And I pulled them off while I was cooking it. But there's the paw of the turtle. Mm. A lot of bones. <laughs> the bones are really hard. Mm, wow. Eating turtle paws remind me of eating chicken paws. They're nearly identical. Yeah, this is amazing. Holy crap, I, I was not expecting it to be this good. So yeah, look at that skin. It's so good. 
Like, look at that. <laughs> <laughs> I would never have imagined that I would be eating turtle skin. It's gelatinous, soft, tender, and it reminds me of pork skin. There's like a tinge of like fishiness to it, but it's not a big deal. Like everything is like sweet, salty, and spicy. This is amazing. This is very well done. <laughs> yeah, I love this. So yeah, the rest of it here, like the meat just fell off of the bone. Huh? Bone is really, really hard. It's amazing. Like after cooking it for so long, I would assume that the bone would get like soft and brittle, but that didn't happen. Look at all this shoulder meat. That's amazing. Mmm. <clears throat> <laughs> yeah, holy crap. This turned out so good. Seriously, perfect dish for a turtle. Here's the other pot. So yeah, I'll be having turtle for the next couple of days and I am not complaining. This is really good. I've learned a lot through this entire process and I hope you did too. And so the other pieces of turtle, I'm probably going to freeze and then I'm going to figure something else out for them. Probably gonna make a soup or maybe some other dish. And as far as the shell goes, I'm going to eat that also eventually. And the three heads that I have in the freezer right now, I'm probably gonna make a soup or something out of it also. So yeah, look forward to those videos, but I appreciate you watching. Please consider subscribing and smashing that like button, and I will see you next time. All right, peace out.